everybody. So we're going to start our first lesson of geometry today. And the learning target states, I can calculate the area and perimeter of polygons. Let's first learn what a polygon is. So a polygon, that's any two-dimensional shape formed with straight lines. It can be seen as triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons. Those are all different examples of polygons. The name tells you how many sides the shape has. So we'll see that in a quick second. For example, a triangle has three sides and a quadrilateral has four sides. You see here the meaning word tri, saying that there's three, and quad for four. These are the visuals for the polygons. As we just mentioned, that the tri tells us that there's one, two, three sides in a triangle. And quad shows that there's one, two, three, four within a quadrilateral. And we also have the pentagon here and the hexagon. Pentagon for five, one, two, three, four, five. Hexagon for six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like we have polygons, we also have a parallelogram. So what is a parallelogram? It's a flat shape with four straight sides where opposite sides are parallel. So some of those shapes would be a square, rectangle, rhombus that are all parallelograms. What makes them the parallelogram, once again, is their opposite sides are equal in length and their opposite angles are also equal. So if we look over here at some of our examples, if you look at a square, although not just their opposite sides are equal, all sides are equal. That's a property of a square. A rectangle, although not all of them are equal, their opposite sides are equal. Same thing with a rhombus. And if you look at their angles, their angles would also be equal to one another. So these are the formulas that we're gonna be using today for this lesson for us to solve area. And each shape has its own unique formula. So the rectangle, we're going to be using area equals length times width. The parallelogram, that's area equals base times height. For triangle, you have two different formulas, so you get to pick which one you want to use. They may be the same answer. So it's either area equals base times height divided by two, or you can divide the base in half and then multiply that answer by its height. So in other words, half the base times height. And square, area equals side squared. So whatever number or whatever that length is, you're multiplying it by itself. So if it's four, four times four, two, two times two, because it's to the power of two. Also, we're gonna be solving for perimeter. Perimeter, that's when we add up all the outside lengths. So that's the only one we're gonna be using addition for. So every outside length, we're adding up for that one final answer. So if you start seeing, you're gonna start getting questions after our formulas. This is the first one you're gonna see. First thing you have to see, is the shape. I identified it, that's my rectangle. I look back, area equals length times width. I have my formula written here already. To solve it, we just have to use our substitution. So I know I'm looking for area, I have my length and I have my width. My length is going to be seven, my width is going to be five. So my area, once I multiply, seven times five, that'll give me 35. But in order to have it 100% correct, whenever we solve for area, our units have to be squared. So our final answer is 35 inches squared. Area equals, or area equals 35 inches squared. But now we're also solving for perimeter. We have two of the four, but we have to use these as clues. Ms. Gilberto mentioned before how its opposites are equal. So if that's five, this side also is five. If this is seven, this side is also seven. And then we have to add up all the outside lengths. So we have to take all four, add them up. Squeeze it in right here. So five plus five plus seven plus seven. Five plus five is 10. Seven plus seven is 14. 10 plus 14, 24 inches. Perimeter, we do not have to add the square root only area. So our final answer for perimeter is 24. Final answer for area is 35. Number two, we have a triangle. So I have two separate formulas. I decided to go with area equals base times height divided by two. So I look at my shape again. So now I'm just going to start substituting. My base is on the bottom. That's 10. So I have 10 here. My height is this dotted line. I know that's my height because it's starting from the bottom. It's going all the way to the top. These are side lengths. They're not straight. So since that's my height, I multiply that by the base. 
that answer I'm going to divide by 2. So 10 times 5 is 50. 50 divided by 2, that would give me 25. I see my unit of measurement, that's yard and yard squared. So my final answer, area equals 25 yards squared. And again, this is my height, that dotted line, because it's starting from the bottom, it's going all the way to the top. These are my side lengths, they're not straight. They're starting from the end, they get in crooked, crooked ways to get to the top. We're not going by them. Again, if I'm going a little too fast, you can rewind the video, all that fun stuff. Last thing we need is perimeter, so I have to add up all my outside lengths. This is a good example because there's an inside length here, that's the height. We're not including that for perimeter. So for outside, I have seven, plus six, plus 10. Again, they're all outside. So if I just end up like this, seven plus six plus 10, I know six plus 10 is 16. Seven plus six, that would give me 23. And again, I keep the unit of measurement, so my perimeter is 23 yards for my final. So just like Mr. Mione said, here are two more problems that we're going to do. First thing you have to do is identify the shape. So I know this shape is a parallelogram. Here's a parallelogram, and the area is base times height. So I'm looking at my parallelogram. Normally when I think of base, I think of the bottom or like the floor. But the base, if you remember what parallelograms are, the opposite sides are equal. So although there's no base here, we have a base here which is six. So I'm gonna plug in my six for my base. And then the height, like Mr. Mione said before, is your dotted line that starts at the bottom and goes straight up to the top. It's a straight line that goes to the top, which is seven. And we know that six times seven is 42. Now it's not just 42, you need your units of measure, 42 feet squared. So area equals for this shape, 42 feet squared. Not only are we finding area, but we have to find the perimeter, which Mr. Mioni mentioned before, it's all it's the length of the whole outside of the shape. So like we said, this is six, the opposite would also be six feet. And if this is eight, the opposite would be eight feet. Now we're not including the seven because the seven's what's on the inside. So now I'm gonna add up all my outside measurements. I have eight plus eight plus six plus six. Eight and eight is 16. Six and six is 12. If I add those together, I get 28 feet. Now that is my perimeter and this is my area. And our last shape that we have here, I think you can tell what it is, is a square. If I look at my square formula, area equals side squared. They only give you one measurement here. So if you have one measurement and it looks like a square, obviously you should know right away to plug into your area for a square. So area equals, so it's not just S squared, that means side squared. So your side length is eight, and I'm going to square my eight, which means, eight times eight, which equals 64 unit of measure centimeters squared. So area equals 64 centimeters squared. Once again, last but not least, I have to add up all my sides. If this is eight centimeters, we know that each side is also eight centimeters. I like to plug in my sides so I know I'm all set. I can add them all up together. We have 16 and 16. If I add that, that gives me 32 centimeters. You could do it that way, or you could do it one other way since you know all the sides are the same length. You could do eight times four, which also gives you 32 centimeters. So there are multiple ways to do it for a square as well. I know I went a little fast, but once again, you'll have a video, you can refer to it, and there'll also be references part of the slide you should have downloaded it already if you have not you can take a quick second pause the video keep it paused to answer the next seven questions this can double as your self-assessment but it's primarily your independent practice so for the next seven questions you have to use the formulas that we just discussed to calculate both the area and the perimeter of each polygon 
If you haven't noticed already that there's no units, as due to the small board, it gets a little messy. But what we're going to do is just keep everything as inches. So, for example, this will be 7 inches, 15 inches, 12 inches, and so on. So use that for all seven. So you're going to be finding the area. So for your final answer, it should be inches squared. Perimeter, just keep it as is. Just have it as inches. Don't forget to show all your work for all seven questions because especially for this topic, we're substituting, we're using different formulas. So it's best for you to see what you're doing, to see where your mistakes are. Ms. Goberto and I just wrote every formula down. We substituted, we even drew each shape. So especially for this topic, we should always be showing our work, but it's definitely going to help for this. So here's your answer key for your independent practice numbers one through four. Take a quick notice how the blue represents your area. So the blue boxes are all the formulas that you should have used and the underline are all of the areas that you should have gotten. And then we have pink here for perimeter and the final answers for perimeter as well. Please pause your video now so you could review your answers and your work. We also have questions five through seven, the answer keys. Once again, just like the previous mentioning of the blue and the pink, please pause your video so you can check these answers and your work as well. So to wrap up this lesson, we're gonna leave you with these two bonus questions. So the first one is, why do the units of measurement have to be squared when we solve for area? The second one is, how do we know the difference between a square and a rectangle? Two things that we did mention, but we didn't elaborate on, because we're leaving that for you now. You can answer these, and you can submit it via Google Classroom, where if you also have a question, you can get in contact with either Ms. Colberto or I. Don't forget, in addition to these two questions, you have homework. It's posted on both PeoplePath and within the slides. So again, if you have any questions, you can reach out, or it'll be online. And I guess you can leave comments, we're trying this out. So we'll catch you there.